Hey guys, hope you're ready for some StarCraft 2 action. Today we are going to be seeing a Protoss vs Terran. It is going to be on Daybreak and it is going to be from IPL4 and that means it's of course going to be Fnatic's Alive vs Squirtle. Of course he's not playing under that name, but it's rest assured it is him. It's our favorite watery Pokemon. Of course no one's ever made a Pokemon joke about Squirtle's name before. And this is going to be on Daybreak. I've got to say I'm really enjoying this map. It is on the ladder pool this season and it just, it really sort of leads into a lot of macro games, or a lot of longer games, and I think that was the really big problem when StarCraft 2 first came out. The maps were just, a lot of them were just too small, or they had really silly or unusual architecture. Like we had, oh what was that awful map? It was uh, Steps of War, where one siege tank could basically cover the entire middle ground. It's just so, so small, always saw the worst games on that map. Not to say that I don't enjoy watching shorter games. Of course, cheese games are fun to watch and to cast, but you don't really see a lot of showcasing of players' skills and talents in games. And in a long game, in a macro game, you usually see how players fare up with their early game, mid game, and late game. Of course, some players are a lot stronger in each aspect of the game, and it's just a lot of fun to see where these players uh, hit their stride in the game, really. So, of course, uh, one of the reasons is probably a better macro map is there's no foolish rocks at the third, which is uh, so annoying on some maps. I actually quite like the, the use of rocks in this map. It's uh, They're not in weird places. For example, this one, you have um, early map, early game, uh, easy to defend. Of course, you can knock this down from below, and if you want to attack and deal with that choke, and of course, you have the middle rocks, which allow you to take these out, and then, of course, uh, it's easier to um, reach your opponent's base. You have to go the long way at the first, so this map really doesn't really allow for a lot of early aggression in most cases. Although we do see Fnatic Alive is going for that second barracks on no gas, and he is hiding it, so he might want to put some aggression on. And I think this will probably just produce a few marines, and then maybe use his scouting SCV to make a bunker, but only if Squirtle had gone for a Nexus first, and of course he hasn't, so wise move by Squirtle. Uh, scanning probe did get into the base and he saw no gas so he knows it's either going to be an expansion build or a multi racks build and I actually think this is going to be a little bit of both. He'll probably start off with the two racks and then go into the expansion and then just play a standard Terran game. So we have the second gas now coming up for Squirtle and this sort of build could uh, easily lead into an aggressive three gate for an expansion build. It looks like he's going to skip that Zilla and go straight for the Stalker. Of course the Stalker's really the only thing that can damage the marines in the early game. The zealots are just too slow and of course the early game marines can't really deal with stalkers actually. Uh, changes later in the game but in the early game then stalkers are just too good against marines if you control them correctly. But that's only against small groups and if you don't get surrounded. And it looks like Alive is up to about 300 minerals. 350? Yep, so he's going to expand. And he does have his scanning SCV at the watchtower and it looks like he's going to pull back Seeing that there's no expansion, I think he's just going to go back to base and try and save these units. Of course, this Stalker is coming up, and oh, got to be careful here. And see that good control? He doesn't lose any HP on the Stalker, just shields, and that will recharge, of course. Now that he's holding the Watchtower, he'll be able to know if any more is coming in. And, of course, with this small units, there's no way they can break out on these rocks. It's the only part of the game, so he has to go all the way around, or go around here. Looks like the probe was trying to scout, but it gets snapped out, so no sneaky pylon can go up. Looks like he is not using his Chrono Boost on Warp Gates just yet. Getting a second gateway and probe on the low ground, so he is going to be expanding, so... Looks like this will lead into at least a two base game. You see the bunker coming up for the Terran's defense. Of course, he doesn't have any Marauders yet, so he can't really deal with those Stalkers. He does have his double gas coming up now, though, and he did fly that barracks back to base. And we see the SCV here, and I think this SCV is mainly looking for uh, probes, because there's a lot of places you can hide probes on this map, such as in these gas vents. You almost always see a Protoss hiding probes there, and oh, unfortunately this SCV is going to be taken out by the Stalker. So he's going to be unable to scan around the base, and he could have used that to go all the way around and see if it's expanding. But that is the case, but he doesn't quite know it yet. So we have a semi-large force of marines here, just moving out, looks like just eight marines. Oh, that stalker's going to be so careful. Looks like he's just started to run and getting a few pot shots off though, so... Nice control by Squirtle, although he does start to lose a bit of HP, but he is weakening his marines. Doesn't look like he's getting any marine kills, but... He's weakened them up for a bit, and until medivacs come out, these marines will be that much weaker. And here we see that nice micro. Doesn't lose any stalkers, but doesn't lose any marines, but... 
half of the marine force is damaged, so that's going to be all the stronger if he decides to come up the ramp, and of course he has these force fields now, so it's probably not going to happen, but we have, oh, looks like three gateways going up under one pylon, and he is expanding though. This probe isn't actually going to expand, I think it's just a hide in case uh, SCV comes down here, and it's a bit of a mind game, he'll see the probe and go, oh, it looks like he's going for a quick third. Of course that doesn't seem to be the case, he is going for a more aggressive build with these three gateways. And looks like Alive has got a tech lab on a factory that he's not using. He'll probably throw that star pot onto it, so we could be seeing some banshees or ravens. Supply is relatively easy at the moment. This probe might throw down a sneaky pylon. Looks like Squirtle is deciding whether or not to put it down, and he might not. Of course, this marine is coming up, so the sneaky pylon could be discovered almost immediately. And it's a shame he didn't hide the probe in the gas for a bit longer. And all the marine might be, no, that probe is not going to get out of here alive. And we do have a stalker here also trying to prevent marines from coming down to seeing. And yes, we do see a banshee now coming out as well as cloak. And with this aggressive gateway play, we have seen more gateways coming down. So we've got five gateways under one pylon, making a total of a seven gate. And I'm going to say, uh, Squirrel's really lucked out in this position because these stalkers, while deadly, and the force fields can force field this bunker. He doesn't have any detection, it's gonna, not going to be any detection for a while, and he can use these banshees to both harass or defend. With Cloak, he could probably take out most of these stalkers. The Terran's going to be in a great position if that's the case. Does these marines come down, and while he loses them, it does give him the tell that there is an attack coming in, so he's throwing up another bunker. He's preemptively pulling a lot of SCVs in line, he does not want to get those force field. Is he sending out one banshee is already out? This is a bold move, he wants to use those batches for defense, I think, and oh, he's going to be careful here. He's going to start force building these bunkers any second. Yep, force fields the bunker, and that's going to go down, no chance of repair here. And that's the Terran unit just can't reach the Protoss army, and he's actually going to do a lot of damage to the Terran here. The second bunker is still being repaired, but a few more force fields on that, and he will no surface area, and impossible repair now, and those SUVs cling to the last bunker. But we have a cloaked Banshee up on the, well, it's not cloaked yet, but it can cloak. And it's taking, out, taking his pot shots versus these stalkers, and the Protoss army is starting to be a bit indecisive, doesn't know where to go. Using the Banshees in the back now, getting a few probe kills. He did move his probes though, so a nice move by him. This is a time and clock, this Banshee. It's got to prevent the Protoss units from staying here for too long. He's got to decide when to get out, and it looks like the time is now to get out. Unfortunately, I think he might lose a few zealots to those stalkers, but nope. Looks like he's only going to lose a couple, and the Banshee is now in the back, taking out, although he is kind of boosting out of obs, so he should be able to take this out relatively soon. Although well, he's up to six kills so far, looks like he might get another... Yes, he gets eight, but is the Banshee going to escape? If the Banshee escapes, this would be great, he can come back into the game. Ah, oh, unfortunately he didn't hold position on that Banshee, and it comes back in for another shot. He does have two other Banshees though, and they are taking out pylons, and the Protoss is a bit of a hard spot here, actually, because, um... Chen is now getting out a Raven, and that's going to be really good for the base defense and also to prevent any sneaky obs watching his army, which of course Protoss loves to do. And how's the Protoss going to react here? He's, he's on the only gateway in the army at the moment. He does have a Robo out, but he's not getting out anything from it at the moment. Probably a bad idea for go, to go for Colossus at this point, because the uh, Banshee count could start going up, and that could be really deadly. He is clearing out these rocks, so he might try and do a bit more aggression. Although the small bio force can probably hold with the help of these banshees. Oh, the banshees are actually leaving the base, so they want to go harass. Although this Raven's point defense drone doesn't have enough energy for that just yet. Is he going to use. Uh, no, he's throwing down a preemptive auto turret, so the turret just wasted a bit of energy there actually, because the Protoss decided to back out. He's getting concussive shells and combat shields as well as plus one, and Protoss is getting down double forges, so we're going to be seeing saying some Chrono Boosts out of these very shortly. Here come the Double Banshees. Unfortunately he's got the Obs there, so he's probably not going to get too many kills, and he's nice pulling it back, but he just missed it. Loses about two Stalkers with this Obs here, and these two Banshees just so long HP, they're probably not going to do any more damage the rest of the game, really. He should probably just return these to base and repair them, and add them up to his regular army. Although he might not know there's an Obs there. Also the Protoss army is now scouting around, just going to look around and then probably return to base. And the Terran has decided to go for his third and it's a good time for that. He is up by about 20 supply. After that exchange of the workers he's up about 10 workers. His upgrades are... at the moment he's 
up one attack, although with these Chrono Boosts, the, the game can turn around so quickly. If you leave the Protoss array alone for like five minutes and Chrono Boosts on these Forges, you could come back and it'll be upgrades way ahead of him. Do you see the Twilight Council coming down? You'll probably get blink from that. I'm very unlikely to see GTs in this game, of course, because the Raven's already out. It'd be all just ridiculous to go with GTs at this moment. Do you see another sneaky proxy pile on here and a drop coming in? However, with these stalkers in the back, just they were they for the Banshee defense, the drop probably won't do too much. So they have a ready force there, and he even moves some more in. So he must have seen that with his probe. Good reaction by the Terran. Doesn't leave that drop ship. It would have almost been surefire death for it. It looks like the Banshee's going to go back and try and take out this pylon. Unfortunately, the slow OBS is not going to be able to catch these Banshees, so probably should just reposition that OBS. But we do have a few Marines up here trying to go for the third. This is not the position the Protoss wants to be in. He's down about 40 supply and he's trying to expand. And at this point, I think it might be just better if he just throws down a bit more gateways and goes for a big all-in. I mean, he's already down in supply, but he's not going to catch up by expanding when the Terran's already got an expansion ready. He really needs to do something creative or aggressive here, at least in my opinion. Looks like he's finished his 1-1 and is now moving on to his 2-2. He is getting some Immortals to complement his gateway army. And that's an alright decision. There isn't. You know, there's, there's some. about half. Half uh, Marauders, half Marines. Do see a armory out, but not really being utilized. Probably just to get the plus three for the turn when it comes up. He's just now getting his upgrades for that, though. And we do see the robotics bay coming down, so it looks like he is going to try and get some Colossus. Terran trying to scoot in and do some damage, but the Protoss is ready, and he's going to be really careful here because he's he's starting to divide his army a bit to defend against possible Banshees and this dropship. And if the Terran just goes in the front, and oh, we see four dropships coming down, so it looks like we're going to have a really big drop. He'll probably go in at the third at the same time, and that's going to force the Protoss to split his forces up. Without Blink, that's going to be very hard. He is getting charged instead of Blink. Here comes the drop. Looks like he's scanned, so he knows he's going to go in, but. This is a really important point. Do you have to know how much of your army you split up and send back to base and how much do you put at your third? And if he gets this formula wrong, then it's over for him. The drop is now coming in, he's gonna take out a pylon. There is one cannon defending. The army is streaming in and uh, it's going in one by one and it's probably gonna lose everything actually. And there's one pylon here. If you take out this hard closest pylon, it'll be all over for him. But it looks like the drop is actually gonna clean up most of these units and actually the front and the force is gonna escape. They funnel through this choke and I think the Terran is gonna take the game right here. He's already a hundred supply -ish up and squirtle GG's. So really good move by the Terran splitting up there. The Protoss just didn't split his army up quite correctly. Unfortunately, he's in a bad position with those dropships. Anyway guys, uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.